Hey, Chris here from IELTS Advantage. Hope that you're all doing well. And in this lesson, what I'm gonna do is give you a step-by-step -step system that will help you improve your double question essays. So task two, there are different types of essays. There are opinion essays, discussion essays, advantages and disadvantages, problem and solution, and there are double questions. So luckily for you guys, I was working one-on-one -on -one with a student and they brought me a double question from this book, IELTS 15. So we're gonna take a question from this book. I'm gonna go through the question with you step-by-step -step in the same way that I did with the student. Uh, we're going to show you exactly what the student did in order to get a band eight overall. And they were really struggling. They were getting a band 6.5. They got a 6.5 multiple times. And what we did was we just showed them simple step-by-step -step systems and they were able to dramatically improve their score. So I'll give you the sample essay that the student produced. We're going to use all of the work that the student produced. And we're also going to give you the structure that uh, the student used on exam day for these double questions. So without further ado, let me jump into my computer and show you exactly how we help the student get a band eight in their IELTS writing test. Okay, so what is this system based on? The key mistakes we see every day that lead to failure, helping you avoid those mistakes, and keeping the examiner happy. That is basically how we have developed all of our systems. What are students doing wrong that leads to them not getting the score that they need? Help them avoid those mistakes and then teach them how to keep the examiner happy. What does keep the examiner happy mean? Uh, does it mean bringing them a box of chocolates or a bunch of flowers um, during your speaking test? No, it is simply understanding what the examiners are looking for whenever they are hoping to give you a seven or above and then teaching you how to give them those things effectively. So our step-by-step -step system, how to quickly understand the question, generate ideas and plan your answer using the simple structure provided, write an effective introduction, write an effective main body paragraphs, write an effective conclusion, and that's it. So let's have a look at the question. So I took this question directly from IELTS Academic 15. Um, these are the Cambridge past papers. The reason why I'm using these, I'm not affiliated with Cambridge in any way. Um, they don't pay me money for promoting their books. The reason why you should use Cambridge past papers is because those are the people that are producing the questions. Those are the people that produce the actual test. Anyone who is not actually producing the real test materials, you're taking a risk that they are making questions that are really, really, really difficult or really, really, really easy or really misleading. Um, so I would always strongly recommend using official real materials produced by Cambridge or the British Council or IDP. So let's have a look at this question. In some countries, owning a home rather than renting one is very important for people. Why might this be the case? Do you think this is a positive or negative development? So the first step that we need to take is understand the question. And please don't skip ahead and just look at the structure and all of those things because one of the main reasons, if not the number one reason, why students fail to get the score that they need is that they simply don't take the time to fully understand the question. And I don't mean just looking at the question and understanding what the words mean. It's really thinking deeply about the question and what they're really asking you to do. Because if you don't understand the question, it's impossible, literally impossible, to write an effective essay. So the first thing that you need to think about when you're understanding the question is simply, what does the question mean? What do the words mean? What do the sentences mean? So you don't understand those, you won't understand what's going on. Then the second step is, what is the general topic? One of the key mistakes that we see students making is looking quickly at the question and then just writing everything they know about the general topic. You want to avoid that key mistake by taking step three, which is 
What is the specific topic that they're asking you about? You're not going to write generally about the general topic. You're going to write specifically about the specific topic, the specific question being asked. And then finally, what do they want me to do? This is going to come after the question statement. They will ask you to do one or more things and you need to do those things. If you don't do those things, you're not going to get the score that you need. So have a look, have a look at the question again. What does this mean? So just simply read the question and do you understand the words? So in some countries, so not all countries, just in some countries, Owning a home rather than renting one is very important for people. So what does this mean? So some people rent a home, some people own a home. Which is more important, all right? Why is that important to people? Why is it important for someone to own a home rather than rent one? So what is the overall topic? The overall topic is home, home ownership, all right? But the specific topic is owning a home versus renting one and why that is important. So if you write everything you know about owning a home or renting a home, you will not really have answered the question. The next thing we need to do is follow the final step, which is what do they want me to do? Well, they want you to do two things. They want you to say why this might be the case. And then they want you to state whether you think this is a positive development or whether you think this is a negative development. If you do those two things within the context of the specific question, you will have a very good chance of answering the question effectively. But if you don't, you will not have a very good chance. So again, step one, what does the question mean? What is the general topic, home ownership? What is the specific topic, the importance of ownership versus renting? And then what do they want me to do? Answer both specific questions. And you might look at this and go, oh, I won't have time to do this. Well, the, the example I always use is when you were first learning how to drive a car or learning how to ride a bike or learning how to tie your shoelaces, you had to think about every single little step that you were taking. But the more that you do it, the more that you move it from your conscious thinking brain to your subconscious brain that just deals with habits. So you don't think about tying your shoelaces every morning, do you? No, because you've done it so many times that it has become natural to you. By following these step-by-step -step systems when you're practicing, you move that into your subconscious brain and you're able to do that without even actively thinking about it on test day. And that is why we give our students step-by-step -step systems because they're very, very powerful. So the next thing we need to do after we have fully understood the question and what they want us to do, the next step is idea generation. So again, we need to look at the question. So what we do is we look at the question and we convert that into a direct question that we want to ask ourselves. So let's start off with the first one. Why would someone think ownership is more important than renting? So when I worked with this student, what they said to me was, I can't really think of one because I don't own a property. So I said, no problem. You don't need to think about why you would own a property you need to think about why someone else would own a property. So the question this person needed to ask themselves is why would someone, not why would I, but why would someone? So why do most people, so he is from India. So I said, why do most people that you know in India who own houses, what do they say about getting a mortgage, owning a house, renting a house, what do they say? He said, oh, that's easy. Most people like to own a house. They prefer to own a house because they think that it's a really good investment and they don't like renting homes because they think that's wasted money. Great, you don't have to brainstorm. You don't have to think very hard about that. You just turn it into a direct question and think about what do you think about that? What do other people think about that? What is the most obvious answer, the most straightforward answer that you can think of? What would most people say about this? That is the answer that you should use. Next one, do you think this is a positive or negative development? Why would someone believe this is positive or negative? So I spoke to him about this and he said, well, some people think it's positive, some people think it's negative. Like, that's not really what the question is asking you. 
The question is asking you, do you think this is a positive or negative development? There are only two answers to this question. Either you think it's positive or you think it's negative. Which do you personally think? And he said, well, I don't own a house. Why not? Why do you not own a home? And he said, because I want to have the freedom to move to a different country, get a different job, take financial risks, and I hope to own my own business someday in my new country. So it's more important for me to have the freedom to do those things than to actually buy a home and you know pay that off every month for the next 30, 40 years. Great, that's your idea, freedom. You think that it is a negative thing to own a home because it prevents you from having the freedom to do what you want. Oh, really? Is it that easy? Yeah, it's that easy. So here's a step-by-step -step system that we give our students to develop ideas. Simply take the question and focus on answering that specific question in the same way that we did here. So we just reform the question to ask ourselves a direct question. Why do you think that or why does someone else think that? Number two. Once you have laser focus, you will generate an idea at the speed of light. Don't brainstorm. Don't think of 17 ideas. Don't think of seven ideas. Don't think of two ideas. What is the most obvious, most straightforward idea that you can think of for that direct question? This idea will be simple, obvious, straightforward, easy to understand, and easy to write about. If your idea is not simple, don't use it. If it is not obvious, don't use it. If it's not straightforward, don't use it. If it's not easy for you to understand, don't use it. And if it's not easy to write about, don't use it. That is why we encourage our students to think about what is the most obvious answer? What is the simplest answer? What is the most straightforward answer? Because you don't get any extra marks for thinking of complex ideas. You get extra marks for thinking of relevant ideas. Does this idea actually answer the question. Those are the only things that the examiner is thinking about. Is the idea that you have produced relevant? Does it answer the question? And did you write clearly about it? They don't give you extra marks for thinking of the most amazing, impressive, high-level idea. That's not how it works. So the two ideas that he came up with were investment. That is what, you know, if you asked 100 people on the street why do people prefer owning a house? Investment. They don't want to waste money on rent. They just want to invest the money into their house and they'll save money that way. But this person, specifically them, in their current situation, they don't think this is a good idea. Why not? Because they want the freedom to do other things. They just thought about themselves simply, why do I not prefer house ownership? Why do I prefer renting? freedom. Is this the only idea that you could use? No, there are hundreds of other relevant ideas. You're not trying to think of the one idea that answers the question. You're trying to think of the idea that you personally can use to help you answer the question. So that's the end of part one of this lesson. In part two, what I'm gonna share with you is the structure. We're gonna go through the structure step by step, and then we're also gonna show you step by step how to write the introduction, the main body paragraphs, and the conclusion, and show you that sample essay from the student that got a band eight. Two things that you can do right now. Number one, why don't you look at that question and try and generate an idea for the first question and the second question and put it in the comments below and I'll personally respond to as many of those comments as possible. Number two, make sure that you get part two by subscribing to the channel and then you'll be alerted next time when we release part two, which will be next week. I'll see you next week for part two.